So when you take your thicker probe and you gently lift the lobes of the liver up, what you'll see is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is actually tucked up inside one of the lobes of the liver, so you have to be careful removing the liver so that you can see other things, not to damage the gallbladder, but especially you need to be careful of the pancreas, which lies below all of these organs and is connected to them, which is easier to see on the next slide. Okay, so to orient you to what you'll be seeing when you dissect your fetal pig, after you've opened up the abdominal cavity, the first thing you're going to see is the liver. It's large, it has many lobes, and underneath it is the stomach. And beside and attached to the stomach, you'll see the spleen. It's long and it's thin, you have to be careful to open the body cavity wide enough that you can see it. Those, the stomach is attached to the small intestine, which is attached to the large intestine, and these are big players in the digestive system. But to really get at what the digestive system is doing, you need to see all the ducts, which is under the liver. So when you take your thicker probe and you gently lift the lobes of the liver up, what you'll see is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is actually tucked up inside one of the lobes of the liver, so you have to be careful removing the liver so that you can see other things, not to damage the gallbladder, but especially you need to be careful of the pancreas, which lies below all of these organs and is connected to them, which is easier to see on the next slide. But before we move on to the next slide, I want to mention that the liver is the largest gland in the body. It weighs about three pounds in an adult, and it's located right up under the diaphragm muscle, which means that it's going to be located under the rib cage, under the lower part of the rib cage. So here you can see a little better the gallbladder and its relationship to the liver, and all the duct work that connects it to the duodenum, which comes right off the stomach. So we've left out the stomach and the spleen in this picture. So you can see the pancreas that would lie behind it. And so the liver's main job is to secrete bile and the gallbladder is going to store and release that bile if it's not all needed. If there's excess produced by the liver, the gallbladder can store it. So people can live without a gallbladder but they cannot live without a functioning liver. You're secreting almost a liter of bile a day. Um, you're processing with that liver a lot of blood-borne um, nutrients so it can convert glucose into glycogen and take amino acids and convert them into plasma proteins that are needed in your blood. Um, it can store fat-soluble vitamins. Um, so those are the kind of vitamins you actually can't have too much of because they will get stored and excessively stored in the liver. And it's also going to detoxify things. So it could convert ammonia to urea. So it's a big part of your digestion. A few of the diseases associated with the liver are hepatitis and cirrhosis. Joining the bile from the liver will be enzymes from the pancreas that will meet in the duodenum and those enzymes are going to include things like proteases and amylases and so you're going to digest your starches, your proteins, lipases for your fat digestion and nucleases to break down your nucleic acid. So all the macromolecules are going to be digested with enzymes secreted by the pancreas. And that digestion will continue on through the small intestine. Ah, so a lot of the nutrient absorption is going to happen in the small intestine, and then water absorption will happen in the large intestine. So to observe the next system, you're going to have to move the digestive system out of the body cavity so that you can see the kidneys. So here you're seeing the rib cage and the kidneys are below in the abdominal cavity, so we've got the rib cage up here and the kidneys. And the kidneys are really, really well networked in 
with the blood, the circulatory system. And that's because um, along with being the massive, massive water regulators for the body, they're, you know, trying to excrete waste and, you know, so collect the waste so that they can be excreted and balance the ion concentrations of the body that goes along with balancing the water concentration so that everything is present in the correct concentration. Because as you can imagine, if something like hydrogen ions was present in the wrong concentration, then that's going to mess with your acid-base balance. And while our buffer system does great things, there's only so much it can do. So this is basically what I'm going to show you of the urinary system, is just to talk about the kidneys. Um, you've got those renal arteries heading into the kidneys. Um, surprisingly, about one-fourth of your cardiac output goes right to those kidneys. So that's um, over a liter a minute. A lot of that blood that's filtered is blood plasma. So when you factor all this together, um, that's Basically, the kidneys are filtering the equivalent of all the plasma in your blood about 60 times a day. So when you think about some of the diseases that come with decreased kidney function, um, it really starts to emphasize the importance um, of all this filtration that's happening. So basically, this happens in three parts. They filter out the cells and the proteins, and then they selectively move things back into the blood. Um, so, you know, glucose, amino acids, water, um, they've, they've absorbed that out so that they can return it to the blood, and then the waste are what becomes urine. So that was a big, complex bunch of processes I just talked about. So in a nutshell, the kidneys are responsible for filtering all the blood, separating out the waste, balancing the water volume, um, establishing correct solute concentrations, which leads to proper acid-base balance, and eventually the forming of urine. And that's all taking place through those renal arteries. And now for the systems that caused me the most trouble when I was trying to draw them out. Um, first, looking at the respiratory system. Here we've got the lungs. And the lungs are um, allowing for diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide um, so that the blood can be oxygenated. Um, that's done by inspiring and expiring, which is basically what we think of as breathing. Um, you need that muscle below the diaphragm to help you know, basically create more space and so the volume of the lungs expands. Um, nestled inside the lungs, you know, close in proximity is the heart, the which is the heart of the cardiovascular system. Um, the heart is surrounded by a membrane called the pericardium, so if when you're trying to look at it, it's a little bit difficult to see or to move around. That's because you have that sack of membrane there that is there to keep the heart in place because, you know, it's already, there's a lot of muscle there. Um, and when you look at the heart, you're going to see the ventricles, which are doing the pumping of the blood out rather than the receiving of the blood. They have a much more muscular structure uh, because, again, you're moving massive volumes of blood through that organ every single day. So that's what to be looking out for. Um, I hope you're looking forward to it. If not, it, I hope it turns out to be a good experience for you. So I will see you for the dissection.